My name is Johannes, as it was already mentioned, or Joe. Feel free to call me Joe. I have other nicknames as well, but talk to me about them after. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about today is creating a game in React. So people usually, usually ask me, so why do you create a game in React? Why don't you use like something else that's probably better suited for the job? And I'm mostly like, well, I know React. And um, so I'm just trying to either find something, some use case for React that it's usually not being used at, or um, it's also easier for me. It's like this, it's kind of saying like, use the tools that you're most familiar with. And so I am really into game development. I haven't done as much recently as I want to. But every now and again, I kind of participate in some game jams. And then I want to, or usually I use React because it's the thing I use every day at work. And I just find it easy enough for me. So yeah, um, long story short, let's just get started. So what I kind of prepared is I'm just going to walk, just going to write some code. And then at the end, it's hopefully going to be a game, or not. All right. Damn it. So yeah, so we got like a background, which is like water. And then now we got like a ship. And then let's create another ship. Well, obviously, they're like the same position. So we need to update the first one. So let's put that 200 pixels in. Right. Let's move those a bit around. Oh, by the way, there's actually not going to be any treasure, unfortunately. So um, it's just going to be ships and stuff and no treasure. Um, yeah. I All right. So now we've got two ships on the screen. But we kind of want one of them to be like the, the pirate ship. So for that, we just put in another component. And now that kind of turns, turns the, the one chip into a pirate chip. Well, it's pretty much done. So how this works under the hood is kind of when I say it's a game component, then under the hood, it has like a game loop, it has a stage, it has a world, and then it puts everything in. So it just abstracts away some of the game-specific mechanics for us. And it will go into what, what a loop does for us in just a moment. But first, we kind of want to move the ship around instead. So obviously, on a key press, we want it to move a bit. So for that to happen, we just say, keep typing shop for some reason. Um, we just put in a key event. Right. Uh, and then we have a prop called on key down. So this one takes a function. So, and in this function, it gives me keys and the previous state. So if I now say, I want keys. Inside of these keys, I'm checking for, let's do the ASCII. And then, hold on. My, my keyboard layout is a bit weird right now. Sorry about that. There we go. Found it. Um, and then we just define a new state that we want to be returned. So we know already that the ship has like an X and a Y position. So what we want to do is just update that depending on the previous state. So state Y equals previous state Y, and then just minus 4. There we go. And then it should potentially work, but it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but 
let's let's just. I love debugging life. Uh, <laughs> so it's not even giving me an alert. What is going on? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so it's actually. There we go. <laughs> I kind of had an issue with the prop. But now if I press the W key, it's actually going up. So let's just copy paste this a couple of times. Right, so now it can go up and down. This is very nice. And then just do the same for left and right. <coughs> Yay, it works. All right, so this is good. And it also moves diagonally if I press both keys at the same time. Yay. OK, so kinda, I just kind of want to explain or take a moment to explain how this actually works. Because obviously, um, key event is not an actual React component. It doesn't render anything. So how this works is that I just define this as a component, but it renders null or like something that gives like a faulty value. And then inside of the chip, um, sorry, inside of the ship, I check for the, for the component. And if it can find a component, I just do something once I see that the on-downs proper prop has been defined. Like in this case, if, if it's pressed, then it will actually move the ship. All right. So the next kind of thing that I want to talk about is a sprite sheet. So the official definition, and I think I got this one off of Wikipedia or somewhere else, is it's an image that contains several small graphics in a tight grid arrangement. And this is kind of how it looks like. So you have like a big image that you that uses small images. You've probably seen this before, like if, if you've done any kind of CSS, for example, and you have like a big icon set and you just need to display like smaller icons of it. So obviously this can be used for animations. But I'm not going to use this for animations. So what I'm going to do is, depending on where I want to move my ship, I want a specific position of a ship being displayed. So obviously, if I move down, I want the ship facing downwards. If I move up, I want the ship moving upwards. So starting with the code from previously, um, we just have to define a direction index that I made up. Um, so this is the wrong one. And now this is going to be fun just figuring out which one is the correct one. There we go. One, one down, four to go. Oh, sorry. Actually, it's seven more to go. Right, so we got that. Is that a correct one? I don't think it is. There we go. And one more. Right, this is looking good. So now obviously for the diagonal ones, it don't it doesn't display them. So we need to find a way to show them. So we are kind of checking for both keys at the same time. So let's say um, in this case, if we want to sh show like the ship facing diagonally, we have to check if it's like the W key and the A key at the same time, then pull in the correct image and then show it.
and there's one I think there should be one here, right? Yes, got it. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, hold on, just toggling through the correct ones. There we go. <laughs> right. So, and then I just need to copy paste this over, and then we got the. So, we got W and D. Perfect. And then we got S and A. All right, this wasn't the correct one. There we go. And one more. All right, there we go. So now we got the ship moving, and depending on where we're moving, it's displaying the ship is facing in the direction. Ah, oh, thank you. All right, so now we got the movement of our ship out of the way. What we kind of want to do is like the, the, the black pirate ship that's just right now standing there, we kind of want to move that around on its own. So we're going to start with the same code that I pretty much wrote previously. And then there is a thing called on update. And this is where the game loop kicks in that I referenced earlier. But let's just show what it does. So it takes in the, the previous state as well. And then it returns an object with the new state. You can see the ship moving one at a time, which is great. Uh, it's a bug that I haven't fixed. Right, so what it does, uh, the the on update, it's it's a <laughs> it's a function that runs on every <clears throat> sorry it's a function that runs on every frame, and then it just takes in um, what what's being there and then just execute it executes it every frame. That's why the game loop is in. So this the game loop enables us to have components do an action every frame. So what we want to do here is obviously we don't just want to move it uh, away. We kind of, instead we want to um, try to set like, kind of like a patrol. Like if it hits like a specific point on the left, then toggle to the right. And then if it hits a specific point on the right, toggle back and forth. So let's see if we can do this. So we want to do like if, sorry, if previous state X, something along the lines of 100 pixel. Then we want this state to switch. And so by default, um, this component already has the state of moving to the right. So we just define that. So if right, which is defined on the state, or on the previous state to be exact,
Right, let's just hope this works. Oh, actually, we need to switch those around. I almost forgot that we need to toggle the other value. in just a second all right boom boom <laughs> all right so we got the, the ship moving around so pretty much the the next step uh, that I'm gonna do and this is gonna be actually the last step uh, for this presentation is that I want to shoot cannonballs with my ship so obviously the, the ship is still on patrol and now we want to put in a cannonball which is another component and then it just hangs right there and then whoa oh no oh i'm all, i almost went too far <laughs> um all right so cannonball let's put back in the cannonball um, so as you can see, the components, they are relatively positioned. So uh, the position of the cannonball takes the position of the ship. So if I put in another X and a Y value, this will now be positioned inside of the ship. So what I want to do then is similar to how we had the key event for the ship, we can define a key event inside of the cannonball. And this time I'm going to put in the correct prop so that it actually works, hopefully. And then put in the, the keys. and it takes the previous state again and needs to return a new state. Right, so we can also toggle the visibility. Obviously, we don't want the cannonball to be displayed. We, at the beginning, we only want it to be displayed once we actually shoot it. So we switch the visibility off. And now we <coughs> check for key and because I'm lazy I'm just binding this to the Q key. Also it might mess up my slides if I put it in on any, any other keys. So right. So now what we are doing with that just to just to show you that it works, I'm just gonna toggle the visibility, but obviously it's not not just shooting yet. Um, so let's define the state that I want returned. State visible and then just put it through. Return the new state. And then once I press Q, we see the cannonball. Well, obviously that's, that's not the whole story. We kind of want it actually to, to move around. So the next thing, we just kind of combine it with what we had in the previous example when we moved around the, the ship. So we defined the on update here. Taking in the, the previous state as again. And so once we know it's sorry, previous state 
Right. Um, so once we know it's visible, actually, um, if we then kind of just want to shoot it up for a bit. Uh, we just want to move it, move it, move the cannonball like just a couple of pixels up, like just maybe 40 pixels, so that it's not in the ship anymore. All right, same procedure, defining the state, returning the state. And then just say y position should be, um, should be the previous state minus maybe like two pixels. So now if we press it, let's just put the ship a bit down. Now we, if we press the Q key, it goes all, all the way over the screen. This is not kind of what we want, but it's, it's better. Um, so we just need to define like a condition where it says, well, if it moves like a certain pixel or then just hide it. So if previous state y is, I don't know, um, let's say lower than zero. Let's see if that works. And then just switch up to visibility. All right. All right, this is almost good, but I think we can do a bit better. Let's do minus 40 and just check this again. Right, this looks good. So obviously uh, we don't want it to shoot like um, always to the top, but that's something that we can then check it with the, for example, if, if we were to take this further, we can then have like the direction index check which direction it's currently at and then decide <laughs> Um, in which direction we want to shoot a cannonball in. But this might be a bit out of scope for this slide and I think the code is getting messy already. Um, so yeah, this is just the example again. Just in case I wouldn't have been able to actually reproduce this, it's just this, the same thing. Um, so, and this kind of lets me to like my last few slides. <laughs> Um, obviously, this is, was just kind of like an idea of if you want to do game development with React, um, this is like the kind of like first stepping points that you would need to do. You could do like uh, a keyboard input really easily. And obviously, because of React's component structures, it kind of lends itself to being quite easy to, to drop, in, drop in specific things like um, specific things that actually don't render but modify the component in a way so that um, makes it very easy to read and to maintain. And if you w would want to take this specific example for like the next step would be to have like some physics in there to actually have some collision and then maybe like some hit points so that it wouldn't, if, if like the cannonball hit, it wouldn't destroy the ship quite at first but like just remove a few hit points and it needs uh, like a few shots to, to actually be destroyed. Um, so what I used to do this is actually a React Game Kit. Um, it has physics in there by default. It has like a lot of things that, that help you with that. Um, but what I think actually this is an implementation detail. If you have like a structure, um, a self-defined structure, how you develop your game, then it doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you uh, use React Game Kit or like React Primitives or anything else. Um, one, if you have your components defined in a way, I think it's, it's kind of uh, real visible very quickly. Right, and that's it. Thank you.